August Alcina is on the High Nine Seven Morning Show. Um, how you doing, sir? How you, sir? I mean, I was doing better. Oh, Me man. and you was moving good. Uh huh. And then I saw you spaz on the pretty girl on BET. Oh uh, yeah, talk about it. Talk about it. You was mean to that girl. I wasn't mean. Then here's the thing: people get honesty and mean mixed up nowadays. I mean, I go through it a lot, so I know where you coming from. And but you didn't have to curse at her. I, yeah, you could say that now, but. If you put me in a position, that's how I felt, and which is exactly I went back to BET mm. yesterday. Yesterday, and uh, that's exactly what I said. I mean, she she was like, I I don't uh, I didn't mean to disrespect you, and I was like, well, it wasn't my intentions to disrespect you. So there was a convo. Yeah, it was a conversation. Okay. But the thing was, uh, you know, before this conversation. I felt how I felt, mm. and I, you know, spoke on how I felt, and I don't take back nothing that I said. That so, so, did you have a conversation with her? And you specifically told her not to ask you that. Yeah, my whole, my whole squad. But you know what, though, what, what I'm, I, I think that sometimes people just can be set up, and I think you know, people just, like you said, quote unquote, doing their job. So off the air, I told August I was saying that the girl was doing her job, and if she didn't have a conversation with you, mm -hmm. you directly, you and her, mm -hmm. and somebody said, look, you need to ask him X, Y, Z, she walks up there and asks you, and you're like, yo, I just told your people back there I'm not answering that shit. Hey, right, but it was so many times that it, it had it been said. That there was no way you felt like she couldn't know that I wasn't on that page. Exactly. Now, mm -hmm. it's your fault, though. You know this is all your fault. Why? Why so? <laughs> Because you're the one that went public with your friction with Trey That's, Holmes. I mean, honest. If you would have never honest. come out and said nothing, <laughs> you said you like honest. Yeah. She's being honest. No, nobody would have never known. They but never known you know nothing. what though? As I, it's all a part of me, um, me growing. Uh, I speak from my heart. I got a big fucking mouth. I it just is what it is. I I don't know how to change that. Um, but. In our reality, it was never to, what I said was never to try to belittle the next nigga or try to cause a problem with the next nigga. It's like, this is how I feel. And I'm the idiot because it's like, I said what I said thinking like, maybe if I say this, these niggas won't ask me about this no more. Ah. But in return, it's like, oh, Everybody beefing and, and when I never said that. And yeah. with these interviews, they put what they want to put up and not show everything that so, they said. So know? what? what is the real story? Because you and Trey Songz, I'm told, don't really have a problem. We don't have a problem. Yeah. I just talked to Trey. I, think I was in Miami with Jeezy, and he got on the line with Jeezy, and I hollered at him. Did you learn? Because was, there was a tour that was supposed to be Trey and August. Nah. That was never a thing. Nah. So where did it come from where you was like, the rumor came out that you were supposed to open up for him. He hated, you couldn't open up, and then... Something along those lines, right. man. It it honestly don't even matter. You what, what happened is, the thing is, I choose to tell you what I want to tell you, and the rest of it just ain't your motherfucking business. That's what it is. Period. <laughs> So what, what did you so what did you learn from the, the situation with BET specifically? Because I we said when we went on the air right afterwards, we said August is a good kid, mm. he's new, all this stuff is new. It's an interesting situation. And I said this, I said he needs yeah. to be real careful because BET is the home of your videos. We don't you don't have a lot of spots that are gonna of you know course. what I'm saying on, on that platform. So what did you learn from how that situation got handled? I mean, I hear what you're saying, but that don't scare me with a place being the home of my videos because to be quite honest, uh, that's not how I get paid. You get paid off your shows. If, yeah, and so, but, and, and that's not to disrespect BET at all because I got love for everybody at BET because uh, they've been supporting me. But you're never going to say that they control what you do because they not choose at all. to support Nobody, you. nobody in this world controls what I do. So, uh, what I learned was that this is, is, is politics, man. And for me, coming from where I come from and not really being so knowledgeable to the fact yep. that it's all politics and it's all a game to a lot of people. It, it's just fucked up because this is my life. This is my livelihood. This mm -hmm. is how I take care of my mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. And it's, and for other people, it's not that deep. It's like, this is just a job. Well, and the real story goes that sometimes their job conflicts with what you're trying to do for yourself. Yeah. And sometimes... 
where you're sitting on our side yep. or you're sitting on the music side yep. or whatever. Sometimes things is moving together, yeah. and then sometimes things is moving against each other. Yeah. And you know, the tough part I always see in artists and even people on the radio is the fact that you know you as an artist, us on the radio, we're just a commodity, mm -hmm. and we are here as long as we pull in numbers, and yeah. those numbers equal dollars, yeah. and we're gone as soon as they don't. And that's tough for somebody like yourself coming up in the game because when you write words on a page mm -hmm. and you sing a song, you're not doing it for the money. You yeah. hope money comes yeah. because you're being honest exactly. and you're making great music, yeah. but you're doing it because it's something that you need, you're compelled to do, your, right. your emotions drive you to right. do it. And when people look at that as disposable, it hurts. Yeah, and what's even <clears throat> more exhausting is uh, the fact that I know that I'm a good guy. Mm, you are I and I like He's telling for somebody to try to take no, he that. He is a good guy. I, I mean, <laughs> look, I was hard. Look, me and when I first you know met August Alcina, I was hard. I was like, "What light skin do? What you do? Say that's so special." And but I learned to like you. But I think that's interesting. You're saying that you, since you know you're a good guy, and you hear people starting to say things about you being mean, particularly, and I relate to this. Yeah. Having a public incident with a woman yeah. does not look good. I, I know this very well, but uh -huh. you get a lot of hate, a different kind of hate. Yeah, of and course. you're like, I'm a good dude, I love women, I'm not ever that kind of guy, yeah. that must have been hard for you. I mean, just not even with women, just just in general, I think that what it is is, it's especially with this industry, so many motherfuckers running around here claiming, oh, I'm the realest nigga, I'm this and mm. I'm that. And when somebody actually says something that's real, then it becomes you an asshole, or you a jerk, Absolutely. you ain't got no right. media training, like just all type of it. I'll take it a step further. And because I've been around a long time, I've seen this happen several times. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to talk about beef mm -hmm. and friction and two people having exactly. a problem and they like to build it up. Exactly. Until the moment, God forbid, somebody really loses a life. Because I've seen that, we lived through that in hip hop. And I said it. Right, because the f the flames got fanned at a Biggie Tupac thing. Exactly. And it turned out, and we lost two of our greatest. Exactly. Or something turns up, and on one of these reality shows, one of these girls get drugged to the floor, or punched in the face. Well Right, and then everybody's like, "Oh, well, why did this happen?" Well, because <laughs> the blogs and the, us and the media done yeah. talk this beef talk yeah. and friction talk, and now it's real. I said, I said that man, when niggas beef, niggas die. That's all I know. That's what I where I come from. When niggas beef, niggas die. So you people throw that beef word around too loosely, yeah. and I just hate the fact that <sighs> nobody want to talk about nothing positive mm -hmm. me and me and i just was talking to my manager about this me and kwan had a issue before um and what people got to understand is we young niggas coming up and mm -hmm. problems gonna happen That's right. and you can't stop that if it I ain't no bitch you ain't no bitch so we just got to figure this out how we figure it out you know what i'm saying but when 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 a problem is actually resolved and you like, you know what, man? I just want to see you do good and get money. We trying to do the same thing. We mm -hmm. we just trying to survive. And we young is coming up. So when then when it's not a problem no more and we say, hey, bro, you know, it's love. And you put that out there to the blogs People think you saw. Not even that. <laughs> they don't it's, even it, talk about it. They don't even it. talk they about it. They don't even notice it. But yeah. you talk about the negative shit. That's the world, man. Yeah. Yo, listen, we do a show on VH1, 1030s, Monday night. We opted to do something fun and funny. Yeah. You don't know we get a lot of love because there are people who like the love, yeah. right? They love it. Yeah. But the thing that causes the most noise on social media and specifically, and I say it, black blogs, because mm -hmm. this is something that we thrive on, mm -hmm. is negativity. Mm -hmm. If you look around all our blogs and the sites that claim that they're doing black entertainment or black gossip or whatever, it's driven by negativity. Exactly. And people do want something positive, mm -hmm. right? Because people do celebrate you and the fact of where you come from Believe and that. things that you lost and Believe they love it. your music and your yeah. fans love you. So don't, that's a, that's a trick. Mm -hmm. uh, the trick of the world is where you start falling into that negative cycle. Of course. Right? And then now you start putting out negativity because yeah. they keep pulling you in. They keep yeah. pulling you in. And it's easy in. to do it because the negative is loud. It's, it's very, very loud. loud. But mm -hmm. it, to be honest, though, it's, it's not really so loud. It, I mean, it, in a day, it, in this day and age, it's only loud because of social, social media. media. It, yeah. and, and, and I always say, 
I do what I do on the um, internet and I get off it. Like I'm, I'm cool on reading comments because it's either two things that can happen, especially as an artist. You can f- get caught up into the hype and think that you're more popping than you actually are, mm-hmm. or you can get caught up into the negativity and let it be your downfall. Mm-hmm. So I just stay away from it, you know what I'm saying? But peop- like even with the interview, the, uh, the wrap-up interview, where I said the shit, about Trey, how I spoke on when I spoke on how I felt. I also said in that interview, man. They asked me about Chris. I said, man, Chris, you know he the homie. Every time I talk to him, you know I always just like pray for him and like I'm sending sending him love and, and positivity, trying to uplift him. But that wasn't the headline. It's the negative shit, and mm-hmm. it's only with these black motherfuckers. <laughs> it, it's. Black, we we our own we we, we the our worst. We our, the worst we our each own other. worst enemy, man. Yep. Yep. Crabs in a barrel is definitely real. Hey, you hey. can't speak about black people, white <laughs> right, man. Let the black people talk about I black mean, people. But you I'm stuck. But I'm in the barrel. I'm stuck in the barrel nah, on the side. Listen, look, listen, nah, I'm, listen. I'm in the barrel. I'm in the barrel looking. I'm nah, in a but see, here's spot. the thing. You get to you get to jump out the barrel. Anytime I do. You want. I try. Hey. So, so August, congratulations. You made a double XL freshman cover. Hey. That was pretty dope. So I saw a lot of talk on the internet of people feeling a certain type no, of no, way. No, no. Why it's about me? I said yesterday in oh, the yeah. realness. And him. I specifically said yesterday. I was like, I'm not sure. I said I love August as. A yeah. R&B singer definitely have mixed feelings about them putting a straight singer on the freshman ten. How right. do you? How did you personally feel about it? Well, before I mean, I guess everybody felt like you, and some people probably still feel like you. But the fact of the matter is, fuck your feelings. It's done, and it's on. <laughs> it's, 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 it's on the. It's, it's on paper and it's on print. So exactly. you were you were honored by it. You were really happy about it. Um, in a way, uh, I, uh, I'm I, I'm honored because I'm setting a new standard. Um. And that's history being made for me because now it opened up the door for so many other people to be mm-hmm. able to talk about it. Exactly. Um, but when I went to Double XL, they was saying the same thing. Like, nah, you're not a rapper. You're not hip hop. This is hip hop dominated. And for t- to me, honestly, I don't know what's going on really with the world of uh, with the world of music because you got singers that's rapping. You got rappers that singing, so you should feel a way yeah. about that. And too. let me take oh, you somewhere else. Let me take you somewhere else. And I said this to Rosenberg yesterday: ain't no hip hop without R and B. Boom. Period. It, it, it doesn't exist. I mean, I yeah, hear your you're argument. Backtracking because when Double XL came and asked us about our personal picks, we dropped names like Mac Wilds. No, we dropped Cypher August. Dro- yeah, we and dropped we, August. We put August and Mac Wilds. Mac Wilds didn't make it, but we put those names up. No, there. no, that's mm-hmm. true. And I think we, we even said like people like uh, D- DJ Mustard. No, I think it's interesting for the conversation. I'm told I'm not mad at X. I think August is dope. So thank you. Bro. I'm not mad at it. But I said the same thing a few years ago when they put Future in. I was like, Future, eh. But listen, that's my own standard for what I want Double XL to of be. Course. Double XL can do whatever the hell they well, want. Of course, but if that's the case, let's talk about the motherfuckers that's on that that's quote unquote rappers that that could that was on previous covers that you don't even know a song by these niggas. True indeed. You got some songs out there. Mm-hmm. You got some momentum. I understand it. And and for you to I, I think it's unfair for you to try to take something away from me. Like, don't take nothing away from my hustle because just because he's a rapper don't mean he's hustling harder than me. And just because he raps don't mean we, we ain't talking about the same shit. We Not don't got true. the same content. And what hip-hop to me is, is is your lifestyle. It's your come-up. It's your background. It's, it's your story. It's your struggle. It, all that put into music with a motherfucking boom-bop beat over it. And that's what it is. So... I'm doing the same thing and talking about more, more and have more substance in my shit than any other of these niggas. And it ain't to brag, but don't try to take nothing away from me that, you know. I, I, mean, I think I, I think Double XL is also trolling us because if they wanted to, they could easily say the freshman cover means blank. They don't. They leave it open, and they just say, we put whoever on. And we're going to talk to the editor, Vanessa. She's going to come by the program. Shout out to Vanessa. Yeah, yeah. she's going to come by yeah. the program. And she's got a great eye for talent. She definitely yeah. does. And, and yeah. we had you at SOBs, and I came back the next day like, damn, that guy's doing something special. So I'm happy you're getting your props. I think it's very interesting that this now changes the conversation of the, the freshman cover. Well, I'm happy August is with us and being as honest as he is. I'm happy to hear that you and the girl at BET done yeah, had yeah. a real grown-up conversation. I want to shout out because she could have folded in that moment. 
And if you watch the, if you watch um, <laughs> Keisha Shantae's her name, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, if you watch it as a good uh, host and media person, she smiled and was nice and kind of le- left it open-ended. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you why she left it open-ended, because she thought she was going to keep going. When she was like, when you was like, I told you not to ask me that shit. Nah, man, of course not. I, I, I know how this. I know how it go. You getting better. I spoke. You getting my better. Piece and it, you getting better. I can only get better uh, <laughs> each and every day, man. So, I, it is what it is. Shout out to the people at BT. No, they show love. Yeah, they show love. Now, um, how is uh, the album doing? Are you happy with the album? It's selling very nicely. Mm-hmm. You got a good fan base. Mm-hmm. You're on Summer Jam this mm-hmm. year on the festival stage. Talk to us about your album and how you feel. I um I don't know how I feel. I, as far as my album and body of work and cre- creativity wise as an artist, of course I'm I'm super I'm extremely proud to have my music out there, you know, to the people. But to be honest, like I don't come from a music world. Mm-hmm. So I remember like so many people talking and a lot of artists get caught up on first week numbers like and, and people really beat themselves up over it. I've seen people really beat themselves up over it and for me I just was like man it is what it is because one thing I do know that uh good music and talent prevails. That's right. So and I know that it is going to spread. So <clears throat> um and they had me like at uh predictions to do 30,000 honestly. Um so I, that my album actually exceeded with people's uh, predictions. Expectations. Yeah, so I just I feel I feel good about it, but I, and I know that it's gonna you know keep on growing. But like I, I'm just in a, a a a weird place right now of trying to find some some balance. If you get what I'm saying. You seem you seem angry a little bit though. You seem like there's something bothering you. Mm, not not angry, just trying to adapt to something because like i said man this this shit is exhaust it can be exhausting like just but what i do know is they talk about jesus and i'm not at all because i can say this type of comment in here in this interview <laughs> yeah. and they're we're not say, jesus no yeah. we're not gonna edit it up and go trace or uh, uh august alcina thinks he's jesus yeah, like, <laughs> f trey songs oh my god <laughs> colon f trey songs <laughs> i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that like <laughs> people people would take that comment and say, oh, this nigga comparing himself to Jesus. Yeah, nah. And that's not what I'm doing, but I, I know that people, you know, they talk about the best, so it is what it is. It's just, you know, it, it's it's a, a little draining when you're trying to juggle a whole lot of different... Well, Ebro made a good point know. to you off the air, though, too. It is a job. <laughs> like, be, being a big star and being a, a professional Being in this singer, game, period. Yeah, being a professional. Because, listen, let's be, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. All of us chose who are involved in entertainment and music to make a living mm-hmm. off of something that's fun. None of us wanted to go get a job at um, at Macy's or, or well, at a gas station. Why not station. go be a stripper if that's the case? Well, that because ain't fun. That, that, ain't, that ain't, fun. ain't fun. That ain't fun. We want to do something that was for us. Strippers be lying. That's why they be back there drinking and getting high. That ain't fun. <laughs> exactly. You have fun making music and you get paid for it well. Right. right. And you get love yeah. and women throw pussy at you. It's a good life. But it's hard work to get to do that, like he said. Otherwise, everyone would get to do it. This is a so you're definitely going to get that work. Now, speaking of which, mm. you're going to have some work to do before June first because mm. when you get on that stage at Summer Jam, it's a different kind of situation. Ooh. We did SOBs and you bodied it. Chicks were throwing panties. Thank it was God. a move. <laughs> Summer Jam is about fifty thousand people. That's awesome. How do you mentally prepare for that? You know, this is a new step for you in your That's career. Um, you know, everything thus far. It, it's never been like a, a preparation type thing. It's it's what it for me. What it is is like shit. You get thrown to the wolves, and it's either you survive or you get you get your ass ate up. And that's all I can do. I can just only go on, on stage and and give them me. And if you rock and you rock, and if not, I I'm sorry. You know. But you're confident. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm definitely uh confident with just going on stage. I if I can go up there ass naked just with a mic, I know that I I. I should be able to. Well, prove hold on. Now, to I'm not. People. I don't personally request that. However, <laughs> you would make a, a serious statement yeah, if you did that. That would be quite a statement. Ebro, could he legally if do you that? If you want to get back on the blogs in a major <laughs> way, that's all you gotta do. That's oh, yeah, it. We got our headline. Yeah. August Alcina will be naked at Summer Jam. <laughs> Yeah. It's either that or August Alcina is on crack because he went on stage. <laughs> yeah. One of the two. One of the two, man. So um, with, I, 
I'm taking everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. You seem stressed out. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You don't seem as happy as I thought you would be. Mm -hmm. And um, would I'm going to ask you straight up. Would you change and go back to the way your life was and take on a regular job? Mm -hmm. Or are you happy being in the place? Because there's people who are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you this. The, the, the people that watch and listen to us and, and support us, yeah. They don't understand how we can be in the scenarios and circumstances that we're in and be unhappy. Of course. They look at us like, what the fuck? Of course. I'd be doing this if that. I'd be doing, but they don't know the game. So they, but I don't ever want them to feel like we take the opportunities provided us by the fans for yeah. granted. Not, not, man, <clears throat> I'm the furthest uh, thing from, I'm, I'm not, Ungrateful. I'm very, very, very grateful uh, to be blessed with the opportunity to do this because just not a lot of people get to do it. And with me coming from where I come from, it's it's just it's so, the people around me, like that I got. You know what I'm saying? The team. Yeah, like on my back, I got to do it for for them, my family, and everything yeah. else. So yeah. I'm definitely not <clears throat> complaining. What I'm I think that when you talk about shit, it's therapy. And this is my form of yeah. talking about shit. And so when you see me in the streets and you think I feel the type of way, yes, motherfucker, I do. Mm. So I'm 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 letting you know. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm definitely grateful uh for the opportunity, but I, I do think that <clears throat> perception is reality for a lot of people and when you don't live it, you just don't understand it. So of course they don't they don't get it. But I, this is why I put shit into my music. I got a song on my album called Fuck My Life. And one of the main lines in that is, is say, even when I'm up, I'm feeling down. And it can be any situation. Like, yeah. people lift you up so high and to tear you down. And I think that it's crazy that, you know, people get to see. You get to see me fuck up because I'm in front of this camera right here. Yeah. So you get to, I don't know you. I don't get to see you fuck up. I don't see none of, nothing that you do. So you can speak and judge me based on like everything that I do. And you can't tell me that I signed up for it because I you don't know what comes along with this when They don't tell you. Yeah, right. And even if not. they and even if they try to tell you because there's a lot of young people I tell what the game is, yeah. they don't listen. They still want to go find out for themselves. Yeah. It's like when your That's parents life. go, "Don't touch that. It's hot." Of course. Of course. Got to burn your ass. But but that's the way of life. I'm I'm Exploring different avenues, different paths, and I mean, I think you you supposed to fuck up, man. That's what life is about. Now that you burnt yourself, you fuck you fuck a bitch, and she burn you, and your dick is leaking. I bet you won't fuck her again. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, um, so social media commenters are perfect. Mm -hmm. No one gets to see what they do. Of course, everything they write about you, every mean thing they say about mm -hmm. how you look mm -hmm. and what you do, they're perfect because yeah. they only exist as. Jimmy X three one seven. No yeah. one knows what the fuck. You don't even have a fucking picture up there. That's Nothing. why they don't matter, though. It's not even them. It's like, it's it's more so something personal with yourself that you gotta get get like that you gotta get together because it's it's a new life, man. It's 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 brand new. Like it's like being born again, com coming into this shit. You, you gotta you know. I, and I'm just out here trying to find my way. I'm and it's about twenty one. And, and find you're twenty one. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And finding out how strong you are mentally as a person because like you're literally just have things flying at you nonstop. You have all these great rewards in front of you, these amazing gifts, money and women and good times and a fun life, but you also have tons of distraction and bullshit exactly. and negativity. And that's what the test and challenge does your, is. Does your past hurt you? Like when you think about the people that aren't here with you now, because I know on your album you talk about that. Is that part of the pain too? Is that you've now achieved something? Of course. And people that you love the most ain't not here. I mean, I, I feel kind of robbed of, you know, like actually... Because I'm in a new place in life. Uh, you gain a little money, you gain a little success. Um, and but I, the, the weirdest shit is I don't got my niggas around. I don't got my you know I don't got no friends. I, because I never really had friends like that before. You had family. And the, and now would be the wrong time to be trying to make new mm, friends. A, a new friend. I got like complete total fucked up trust issues with people. And I hate that, mm. but I mean, it is what it is. It, I I never knew how to make friends. 
because I've always been moving around, jumping from here to here. here He's giving here, us so here, many here. headlines. You know what I'm saying? August Alcina has serious trust issues. August Alcina <laughs> doesn't know how to Yeah, I'm going to sound like a fucked up bitch or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're being real right now. Nah, I, I'm going to be honest. Any, any grown man um, that's watching this or grown woman at that, any adult yeah. that's had to deal with their demons or their insecurities or the, the obstacles that they, you know, that shit they traps they fell into and shit they overcome are going to watch this and understand that you're actually more advanced than most people your age. Believe that. And anybody that's going to judge you and say that you're not a man because you are in touch with your emotions is probably not a man themselves or a grown woman. So don't ever worry about that. Um, I just... Your new single's called Numb, which yeah. I think kind of speaks to what I'm hearing you say is you're in this fucked up position. Yeah. You're kind of just numb because you've... You've uh, achieved some things that you never thought you would achieve, yeah. but you've also left behind some things that you love, and you've also lost some things that you care about even more than both of those things. Right. So that puts you in kind of a whirlwind and just makes you know. I mean, that's uh, to be. I mean, that's exactly it. A lot, a lot, a lot of things that I've accomplished is like, <clears throat> like you said, people look at me like I'm ungrateful, uh, or I'm arrogant about it because I don't got too much to say about it, but. It's never that. It's just like I know that I got so much to do, and I've seen people come up and just be popping and be at the height of their shit, and everybody love you. And then a few months later, niggas, it's like, well, shit, what, a, where you at? You know, at that moment, and I know, like you say, you show Chris Brown a lot of love. Mm -hmm. I know Chris since before he had a deal, mm -hmm. and him and I have had many, many private conversations when he was fucking up. Yeah. Before the Rihanna shit. Yeah. After the Rihanna shit. Things that I've never talked about on the radio. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem ended up being exactly what you're talking about. He got a lot of popularity very young. Mm -hmm. Got put in situations he didn't know how to handle. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how to control his emotions. Then had bad people around him that was pushing and pulling him and getting him high and doing drugs with him. And what you're saying about not really having friends. Think about someone like what he... Um, and now he's in jail. Right. After all that success he's had, after all them and talented as shit, after all the <clears> shit he's been through, we look at Chris as a bad person now because of his actions. But when you really analyze it, he probably didn't have the right friends, didn't have any friends, right? didn't listen to people. Because I know there's times where there's people around you that's trying to coach you, and you're like, nah, fuck that. That ain't what I feel. Of course. Of but course. they're like, my man, right. listen. I go, Rosenberg's a grown-ass man. And I tell him shit all the time, and he can't control his emotions. I'm like, my man, play this right, play this but, right. But that's the thing. Don't do, don't Over do, time you don't learn, do, though. don't die. Ah, you done fucked it up. Okay, I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I've gotten better. But 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 a lot of times you got to learn for yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it sounds like, and you know, shout to Chris wherever you are. I hope you're watching this. You and I have had a lot of conversations, but it sounds like you're in at least a space where you understand what's yeah. happening to you. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. Um, and what I, what I don't want to do, because somebody asked me the other day what I fear. I'm fearless. I only have ambition in my motherfucking heart, drive, and I'm a hustler. Um, I'm fearless because there's nothing that you can do to me that I can't do to you. Everybody got guns. We can fight however you want to, like the ignorant shit, the professional way. But what I do fear is me being blessed with an opportunity and fucking it all up Talk like about over it. some dumb Talk ass about shit it. And, and, and actually having to be in hell on earth because that's what it is by, Talk about by just it. regrets exactly regrets exactly yeah. and not being able to walk away from a circumstance that's make or break I was just telling I'm having a daughter in, in, in August. Congrats, and I was, brother. Th the mother and I was talking last night, and I said, you know, people come to me all the time, and they're like, oh, God got you. You having a girl. That's what you get for being a dirt bag, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. And I never was partial to having a boy or girl. I didn't care. Like, I just wanted a healthy child. Believe that. I want to have a successful family. I work very hard. Um, I've achieved certain things, and now it's time to start a family. But it dawned on me after I found out that I had a daughter that it was a blessing. Because daughters, why you have to worry about them getting pregnant and boys and being boy crazy? If you give a woman attention, she feels love in the home. She's not going outside just throwing a body around mm -hmm. like that. But with a boy, there's so many crossroads that a man, especially a black man, goes through where yeah. you're not a, when you're confronted with a scenario and you walk away from it, you a bitch or yeah. a pussy, Believe right? That. And somebody's trying to 
play you. Yeah. Or and you know we was just reading articles about a lot of the gangs that's going on in New York. There's these new gangs popping up, and most of the forty percent of forty percent of the violence in New York City is because of gangs, and it's uh, specifically young black and Spanish men. And their response most of the time when asked why they committed a violent act is because so and so disrespected me. <laughs> and so what that tells you is is though. What you're talking about, and now where you are, like you said, and the first yeah. part of that statement was, we can handle it however you want to handle right. it. You, you know, you was right. getting your little greasy talk on all that stuff. <laughs> but pull out that pistol and it's a wrap. Spray on somebody and it's a wrap. Believe that. If you're not able to be like, yo, I'm not fucking, I'm not going to this club tonight because them niggas in there be wilding. I'm right. not doing that. I don't care how many bitches in there. I don't care if I need to pop bottles, how many blogs I want to get on. If you're not able to be like, you know what? I'm going to just get something, bring it to the crib. We're going to watch a movie and cool yeah. out. Or I'm going to bring my friends to my house, just my clothes. You know what I'm saying? Those type of decisions in life are the crossroads that a lot of young men fall into. Yeah. And it only, takes, it only takes 30 seconds. And, of course, the deeper level to that is, is not allowing disrespect like meaning mentally, and I'm not from the circumstance of the people that we're talking about. I was I had a very comfy situation that allowed me to build up these feelings, but like I can't be disrespected. You would literally like have to have sex with my wife on tape and send it to me or something. Like, <laughs> you can't. There's nothing that you could say about me that I would care about. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Believe people it. feel like they'll body someone over a, an incident that's seen as disrespect of. A, Someone else getting a well, bottle and, there's all, and shitting there's also, on them. Or, but there's like, also the <laughs> fact that the, the real factor in this is some people have nothing to lose. That and too. so when they are disrespected and they're already uh, not happy with their life, they feel like they don't have anything to lose. And they don't. Sometimes what they I'm don't. telling you is, you and, and young men that have, yeah. you know, surpassed their neighborhoods and found their way to college and might be playing ball or yeah. have a little opportunity to have a singing career or got a good little job, you got to know how to navigate that. You got to know how to walk away from that because you do have something to lose. And when you're looking across, you know, the, the club at somebody that has nothing to lose, yeah. that's not a situation that you want to be in Believe when you that. have something to lose. Yeah. August Alcina, I know we, we, did, we went round and round, but I appreciate <laughs> you being honest. Of course, man, always.